Hi everyone, I'm Toby and I am a loose sketcher and today I'm going to share my seven perhaps most unique or unconventional ideas to elevate your sketching and get yourself that authentic, unique feel to your sketches. Really excited to share these ideas with you because instead of just talking through the same tips, the same tricks that you've probably heard a million times before, we get to talk about things which are more interesting, more unique, more fun and really things which you can just go out and do straight away and perhaps just through trying these different ideas you will get that spark of inspiration which takes you further and further down your artistic journey. And if you want even more help moving down your artistic journey join me on sketchloose.co.uk there's a free course linked in the comments below. Now the first thing I'm going to suggest is that you try something different, something scary. What about blind contour sketching? Obviously normally when we sketch everyone talks about observing. Make sure you're looking up at your subject, down at your paper, up, down, up, down all the time. And this makes sure that you get it accurate. This makes sure that you focus on your subject. And yes, observation is absolutely key. But in blind contour sketching what we do is we never look at the paper. That amps up, it doubles down on that observation. You have to really focus on your subject to stay in the zone and to get your sketch down in a semi-accurate way. And I say semi-accurate because with a blind contour sketch, you're not looking at the page at all. Things are going to go wrong. It's going to be spontaneous. It's going to feel loose. But within that, there's going to be a touch of magic. The other key benefit to this is that your only way of focusing on what's happening on the page is by feel. So you are going to improve your coordination, your hand-eye coordination, and you're going to improve that sort of sensation that you get from the paper, on the pen, and how they interact. That feedback we get through our sketching implement is really important to the sketching process. Next, I'm going to suggest you embrace unconventional tools. There's loads of ways to do this. It might be that unconventional for you is changing from a fine liner to a ball pen. It might be that unconventional for you is changing from a fountain pen to a dip pen, or even getting an old fashioned quill, a sharpened stick, and using that to create lovely ink sketches. Or you can get these beautiful glass dipping pens which can create magic on the page. One of my favorite unconventional tools to use is something as simple as coffee. You can create beautiful sketches with a hint, a tone of coffee used instead of watercolors. Not only can you use the coffee to create those amazing textures, but also beautiful different values and washes across the page. Another great tool to use is salt. Salt absorbs the water from our watercolors and it creates amazing textures on the page as well. So whatever unconventional means for you, it means just do something different, try something experimental, have a Google and check what does Google say about something new I could use in my art and just try that. My next tip is to start incorporating abstraction into your art, creating abstract or semi-abstract art to see how that changes your sketching processes. Abstract art isn't about going mad and just creating crazy splashes. It can be if that's what you want to do. But in abstract landscapes, in abstract portraits and abstract sketches, normally what it is, it's about focusing on simple shapes, on focusing on colour and form, rather than focusing on details. This might mean that we take a beautiful landscape and we simplify the mountains into simple circles and squares, allowing us to explore the colour in far more detail. It might mean that we take the mood of a sketch and replicate that in texture, rather than strictly sticking to the actual colours that are on the scene. Whatever it means, what it does mean is not being strictly objective, but being subjective, making your art for you about what you want to try, not feeling you're going to be judged because your scene doesn't look exactly like the one in front of you. Whilst we're talking about abstract art, we can move to the next tip very smoothly because it's all about collage. Now collage is really fun to include in your art. It forces you to abstract a bit, but it lets you play with different textures and colours. Perhaps you could just really simply cut out random bits of newspaper print, stick them on your page, and then sketch your scene on top of that. Seeing how you need to either cover that texture or incorporate that texture into your sketch to make it feel real. 
you might find specific things. You might find a hot air balloon in the front page of your newspaper or a man walking down the street. You can cut them in and incorporate those elements into one of your scenes. You could use Christmas cards, you could use random colours, you could use confetti, you could use anything. Have a go incorporating non-sketching elements into your sketch and see what happens. Next, I'm going to suggest we try some minimalist sketching. Minimalist sketching means we get to strip everything back. It means that we have to make decisions. It means we can't just rely on slow observation and careful colour matching to create our scene. Instead, what we have to do is look at our scene and decide what is important. What shapes are important? What colours are important? What is the minimum amount of information we need to put on our paper to create something great? And you might surprise yourself with just how little that is. Another thing to do might be to force yourself to do a contour sketch, just getting the outline or the silhouette of the scene and seeing how you can then use colour or tone on top of that to create the rest of the scene in your mind's eye. Whatever it means for you, just try stripping back your processes. Make it simple, make it a little quicker and see what develops and how that might change and influence your sketching. Another bit of fun is to try unexpected colours in your scene. Adding unexpected pops of colour can really change the focus of an image. Suddenly, instead of focusing on one area where all the density of line work is, your eye is naturally drawn somewhere else. That can be relieving, it can be intense, it can be all sorts of things, but it's certainly different and it certainly is another thing to stretch your creative processes with and to just get you deciding, making decisions and being an artist. Now, something that I think is really under-recognised is the importance of your surface. We spend a lot of time focusing on buying the best colours, the best brushes, the best pens, but what really matters is your paper. Paper makes an enormous amount of difference. And it doesn't have to be paper, it might be card, it might be wood, it might be metal. It depends on what you're using. For me, I love ink and watercolours, so I tend to stick with my watercolour papers. But sometimes I switch to cardi paper and suddenly my colours are bold, my textures are amazing. You can even try things like getting a watercolour ground and painting that onto a random bit of wood. And now you can create this amazing textured wooden panel of watercolour. If you use acrylics or oils, then everything's fair game. You could paint on almost anything and just see what happens. When someone asks me what they should invest in, I always say the first thing to invest in is paper, but also the first thing to experiment with is paper, your surface. So try a few things out, see what happens when you go from sketchbook to expensive paper, to cheap paper, to something totally unexpected. And I'm sure that you'll learn something about not just yourself, not just your colors, but also the direction you want to take your art in. The next thing I'm going to suggest for your process is that you focus on decision making. You might have noticed that when I've suggested some of my other tips, we've said change your surface, that's a decision. We said think about colours, that's a decision. Abstraction, that's all decisions. Now you could go back to your normal sketching process, but as you're sketching, just think, what am I doing? What decisions am I making? When am I departing from reality? When am I departing from just copying or essentially tracing an image to becoming an artist, becoming the person who owns the art, who created the art, who is really in charge, enjoying themselves and therefore more relaxed and more creative. So just as you sketch, as you paint, as you draw, work out who's in control. Am I in control? Am I making decisions? Or am I letting the art rule me? And that is an amazing tip to start developing your process, to start being in control of what's happening and really having fun. And with that, we're done. So you don't need to go out and try them all, but try at least one, maybe two. Or if you're up for it, three, four, five or six of these tips and see what happens. I think the biggest tip is the one at the end. Make some decisions. If you're making decisions, you're developing, you're becoming an artist. So have a go at that see what happens and I'll see you in the next video. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really really happy. Thanks again.